Whether you have a job, you're in school, or you're just involved in a group, you're probably working with someone or around people. Well, Netflix's new game show, Awake, can help us understand how those people affect what you get done. Hi, I'm Craig, and welcome to Market Power, where we look at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. And once you understand that power, you're gonna see the consequences of our choices, which will help you make meaningful change in your community and in your personal life. A week ago, I was sitting in this office watching Netflix so I could collect data on their new game show, Awake. This is a game show where the players stay up for 24 hours straight counting quarters. Then they have to do some tasks and they have this opportunity to win $1 million. But that counting quarters part was the part that was interesting to me because we could see people doing a job and how productive they were. Well, as I was collecting that data, I started to notice some interesting patterns across the episodes. Like in one episode, one woman gets up and starts doing squats with her bag of quarters and another woman comes in and joins her. Or out of the eight episodes in the season, there's only one episode where someone leaves because they get sick. I'm done. But in that episode, two people leave. And then you also saw that there were definitely times where there was a chemistry in the group, like they would come up with a group cheer. Sometimes so, you know, kind of perk up our energy counter quarters would go, woo, woo, woo. These things got me thinking about how the people around us affect what we're able to get done. And getting things done is an important topic in economics. We call it production. When you produce something, you're getting things done. But economists are really interested in how you get things done. And one of the hypotheses or one of the theories in economics is that when you have somebody that's really good at getting things done, it helps the people around them get stuff done too. Or if you have somebody who's really productive, they increase the productivity of the people around them. And when I think about this, I'm just transported back into my office in graduate school, which was in this old mansion that had been refurbished for offices and had this big open like grand room. There was like a fireplace in this office that didn't work but we would get a couple of graduate students to sit at desks in this office. And when I was in there with other students, I wanted to work harder because I knew those other students were working hard too. And I did not want to be the one that was slacking off. And so the people who were doing good and getting stuff done around me then affects how I'm able to get stuff done. And you can probably think of instances in your life where you've seen this too. Well, that room where they're counting quarters reminded me of my graduate student office. And I just wondered like, if there's somebody who's doing an amazing job counting quarters, does that push other people to try and work harder? So we're going to investigate this and I'm gonna show you a little bit of the process of how we do it so that way you can understand whether the data actually support this idea or not, and then how that affects what goes on in your life and the choices you need to be making. Let's think about how we're actually going to test this. We already know that we wanna look at how many quarters people count, but what's the right comparison? I think what we can do is look at the person who collected the most quarters and then look at whether that is related to how much everybody else collected. So we're gonna just take out one person and compare what they did with what everybody else collected. You can imagine this one person like the pace setter in a race. Sometimes like elite athletes will get somebody else, a teammate, to run with them and keep them at a pace, run faster, and that pushes them to run faster themselves. They have an effect of their teammate on their own productivity. And so what I'm looking at is, if there's a person that does really well, does that lift the other people to also do well? Does that inspire them to keep going and count more quarters? So now that we know how we're going to test this, let's see how we're going to actually know if we find anything. And this is gonna be a very straightforward test, nothing fancy, because we only have eight episodes, which means we only have eight times that we get to see this. So what I'm thinking is we're going to get a scatter plot. We're gonna get along the x-axis how much the person who got the most quarters counted. So that's gonna be their total. And then on the y-axis going up and down, we're gonna have how much everybody else collected. If we think that the person that collects the most helps everybody else, what is this scatter plot going to look like? It might be hard when you just have a blank canvas before you, but let me split this up into quadrants. And we can imagine like, where are the dots going to fall? Which quadrants? Well, if we think the pace setter affects everybody else, that means if a pace setter that collects a lot of money will then bring everybody else up 
and they'll have a lot of money too. So that quadrant in the top right hand corner, we should see some dots in it. On the other hand, if that pace setter isn't running that fast, they're not gonna really push people up. They might even bring people down. And so we should see down here in the bottom left hand corner as well, some dots. So what do the data tell us? Well, when we plot the data, it looks just like our hypothesis. The top right hand corner and the bottom left hand corner are where almost all the dots are. There's this one stray dot in the bottom right hand quadrant, but that's you know not a big deal. We kind of expect that. So there's actually some evidence here that these people are affecting each other. Somebody who collects a lot of quarters is tends to be in a group where everybody else collected a lot of quarters. Now, we have to give you this caveat where we don't know if it's really a pace setter situation. We don't know if there's one person who's working super hard and that brings everybody else up. Or if you just get a group that has some sort of cohesion and everybody's pushed up, including the person with the highest collection. So we don't know which way the causality goes, if it's really that one person or if there are other people in this group or where it comes from. But it does look like when people are working hard, they help each other out. And so there are some key takeaways for what we do in our community and in our personal lives. When people are more productive, that's going to help other people be more productive. This is one of the reasons why we subsidize education because education typically increases our productivity and as those people get more productive, they help the rest of us be more productive. It also can apply to you when what you're doing in your job or the type of jobs you select. Like if you're more productive, you can help the people around you work harder. And if you want to be more productive, you need to find a community or a job, something where they are working hard and it will inspire you to work harder. I did another video with Awake looking at whether men were better at counting quarters than women and whether there were any jet lag effects. If you thought this analysis was interesting, go ahead and check that video out because you'll find that one interesting too.